Hi, Prati. Hi. We are live. Good evening. Welcome to iFocus number 99. We are almost at the 100. Next, uh, of course, on Friday, we'll be on uh, the 100th episode and we'll have something special for that day. Uh, today is the glaucoma third lecture that is by Dr. Harsh Kumar, who is uh, senior faculty at Center for Society, New Delhi. Dr. Vanita will introduce him. All I want to tell you is that Dr. Harsh was my teacher as well. He was a junior faculty at Tapi Center when I was a junior resident. And the way he used to teach glaucoma is unparalleled. At that time, he was doing uh, retina and oculoplasty. So he's a master of all of ophthalmology, but he is the DJ of the disc. So there we go. Panita, please introduce uh, Dr. Harsh and uh, he can tell you. Thank you so much. You've done a wonderful job of doing that. But um, yeah, it's a great pleasure always and an honor to, uh, to introduce Dr. Harsh Kumar. Um, uh, well, reintroduced now because he, he is our uh, rolling chair uh, along with our co-chair, Dr. Pratip Pyas. So um, I think um, uh, almost everyone knows that he was uh, an additional professor, a former additional professor at the RP Center at Ames. Uh, he's uh, uh, done his fellowship at the University of Illinois. And, uh, you know, after having done his post-graduation in uh, uh, and senior residency in uh, at Ames itself. Um, he is um, a, a Padma Shri awardee 2015. He is very well known for his uh, passion for teaching, for you know laser procedures, for glaucoma surgery, um, and he's uh, very well awarded. Um, he has over 70 index publications several books, he, super, he supervised several theses and uh, has described 10 laser uh, procedures, um, uh, well, new laser procedures for, for glaucoma. So I invite Dr. Harsh Kumar to uh, talk about uh, DISC really, which is the cornerstone for diagnosis of glaucoma. One cannot escape the, um, the, uh, the uh, clinical skill that is required to understand whether a patient has glaucoma or not. Over to you, Dr. Harsh. Thank you, Vanita, for such a kind introduction and to Santosh for the same. <clears throat> so let's go on. Uh, the heart, this is our uh, center at uh, Dwarka the latest center for sight, uh, really unparalleled, beautiful building with all the latest facilities. And uh, why am I here in front of you today? And uh, yes, teaching has been my passion. And uh, I and Prateep and Vanita every day see patients who have only one eye left. And so I will tell you this thing, all of you hot seaters and everybody who's listening, I am angry at myself. I'm not angry at you people. There has been some shortcoming on our part that still every day, every day I get a one-eyed patient whose other eyes almost gone. And when I tell them, how the hell did you reach this place? And some of them will throw down seven files in front of me, sir, look at this. Seven of your doctors, the patient who operated, the doctor who operated my cataract, I went four times after that. Then for watering, I went to another one. For something else, I went to somebody else. Nobody ever detected glaucoma. And I really want to cry and I want to sit down and see that something has gone wrong because we have been teaching for almost 30 years. What has happened that we have not been able to inculcate in you guys the right sense of teaching? So the aim of this lecture is 
that someday, somewhere, I agree that you will pass your exam. And we will, I was talking to Rolika and she was very happy that in my exam, something from the iFocus was asked and I was able to answer so beautifully. My aim is way beyond that. My aim is that when you are standing in that exam of your life, when you are all alone and you are looking at a patient who has had full faith in you, it is there that if you are able to detect that those early changes mm -hmm. and prevent that person from becoming blind, you are not saving that person, you are saving the entire family as we see each and every day. So like Vanita rightly said, this is the cornerstone you please have to understand. And you have to develop a passion for looking at the disc and detecting early changes. And if you can do that, I think that one person's smile, I think uh, my whole job would be done if you can do that. Save those people from blindness. And that is why what we want to tell you. <clears throat> so obviously there'll be so many questions in the exam and how are we going to look at it? So what exactly is the optic nerve head? How do you examine it? How do you store this info? What is the significance of various features like margin, size, vessels, zones of atrophy? What is the differential diagnosis of the thing that I'm seeing? Is it glaucomatous? Is it neurological? Or is it just a physiological cup? Or <clears throat> is it open angle? Is it angle closure? Can I guess it? How do I correlate the disc with the field? Obviously, we'll have many more lectures. And most of these things will be covered again and again. But please remember, optic disc is the most important marker. Piyushi, can you tell me why is it so that it is the most important marker? Piyushi? Normal tension. Yeah, tell me. So Piyushi. because of something called normal tension glaucoma. Um, yeah. Because IOP might be normal at first visit, but there will be optic disc changes. Okay, what else? Sir, also it will, um, optic disc uh, changes will correlate with the uh, field effects. And, uh, okay. So, most of the ophthalmologists, we are talking about India, we are not talking about you people sitting in big big centers. Where? 80 to 90 percent of the people may not have any access to perimetry and even when you have access to perimetry you know how difficult a test it is so and it is an expensive test most of the people in their from first go will do it wrongly there's so much of learning curve with it so it's very very difficult to do it so you, you rightly said that okay it is first of all because the pressure may be normal. So the patient comes to you, the pressure is normal and half the people miss because they look only at pressure which is not in the diagnosis of glaucoma. So the other thing what it is, it gives you an idea of early change. Like you rightly said, it collaborates with visual field effects. Almost 40% of the progressions detected in various studies were by the disc photographs. So disc photograph, so wherever and whenever you go to your practice, definitely pressure, disc photo, OCT, these are all, and field. So these are all standard parts, including gonioscopy and corneal thickness. These are all parts of the things that you are going to do. <clears throat> so at the heart of our, this thing is a glaucoma evaluation. Also, why is it so important? Sony, can you tell me why? Besides all this, why is it so important? Sir, to know uh, how, how the glaucoma is progressing in the visits, we can... Okay, the first thing that I told you is detection. So first thing is that it is the cheapest methodology by Good. which you can detect. Why? Right. <laughs> Please, once you have spoken, uh, make it mute because I think there is a lot of interference coming in. So I'll just tell you a small uh, story because we were talking and it's always the stories which stick on. So I had this patient, 620 micron corneal thickness. We have all taught that thicker the cornea, the safer we are. And 14 micron is equal to 1 millimeter. So the diurnal variation was 20 to 24 millimeter. I look at the field, field is normal, disc is normal, OCT was pretty much normal. And I said, all right, let me let this guy go. 
he was a one eyed patient yet i told him please come after 6 months in india when you tell them 6 months they will come in one and a half years so next time when this guy comes to me he is already having a veg defect so yet what is happening here is the field is normal so what does it tell you arnav what does this tell you surbi what does this tell you abhi <laughs> anybody what does this tell you that after 30 to 40% of the nerve fiber layer loss it can be picked up on the fields right very good so <laughs> the first simple thing that you want to say is that the structural damage is first by and large it is not a hard and fast rule don't give it an answer that all the time this happens it can may sometimes be the reverse but by and large structural damage is the first and just by your naked eye and ophthalmoscope or a simple thing you can detect that yes this patient has glaucoma the field may still be normal that is why this is the cornerstone so the oct which was initially normal later became abnormal but that is what it was so now if you come out <clears throat> what exactly are we studying we are studying the <clears throat> ganglion cells their axons so that what is optic nerve head it's not the disc it is the optic nerve head where 1.2 million ganglions they uh, their axons are coming in over here collecting over here and there are 1000 bundles over here crossing through the lamina cribrosa <coughs> through the astroglial this thing and then going down to form the so this part is the demyelinated part and this is the myelinated part of the optic nerve and this is the distribution of the fibers so most of the fibers are lying over here and they come right to the uh, temporal part and the rest arch over here superior and finely and this all are coming from the nasal part as far as the nerve supplies uh, the uh, the blood supply is concerned the nerve fiber layer is pretty much supplied by the arterioles of the uh, retinal artery the rest is pretty much by the short and the long ciliary <coughs> arteries forming the zinhaler circle of zinhaler and this is the lamina cribrosa which is the crux of the whole matter that we'll be talking about and this is the extension of the sclera through which the things are passing <clears throat> so how will you examine please remember the examination has to be done with dilatation if it's a case of angle closure of glaucoma you do a peripheral eye otomy yes, and then you will dilate and if you are going to use a red free filter it will be so much more better for you to be able to see everything the simplest thing is to see a direct through a direct ophthalmoscope and you can carry everywhere anywhere it will give you a large magnification the problem is that it's too large a magnification and there is no stereopsis uh, <laughs> i think this are not very important most important indeed today's practice is 90d 78d or 60d or whatever you have that lens and the slit lamp which almost everybody has you can study the <coughs> disc so what are we going to study the first thing we see is what is the limitation of the or what is the rim of the disc that is the scleral edge over there which will tell us the rim is extending till this part but in truth what we are studying is the neuro retinal rim all the fibers are coming into these areas so we all the time talk about the cup it's not the cup it is the neuro retinal rim which is important and whatever happens over here is of the matter of crux the single most important thing that if we remember even today when i go back i teach i still again remind myself and go back and see the maximum number of patients that can, you can catch at a single go and say that something is wrong is if you follow the is in true so the moment you look at the disc you are looking at the color you are looking at the size you are looking at the size of the cup then you come to the neuro retinal rim and when you come to the rim the first thing that you should see is the <clears throat> is in true that means the inferior portion has the maximum number of fibers followed by superior followed by nasal and followed by temporal the moment you see that this rule is not being followed you know something is wrong somewhere 
and you immediately catch up that things are not right. So now it may not be only focal, there may be generalized rim thinning. So Shruti, can you tell me what one vascular sign has happened over here in the last 10 years, which will tell us that rim has actually thinned out? Sir, there is a bayoneting, uh, sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> there is a kinking of the pill, sir. Okay, that is there. So, Sogata, can you tell me anything more? Abhishek? Yashasvi? Anybody can tell me any vessel? So there is, there is barring, barring of the, the blood vessels. Very good, very good. Not barring, bearing of the blood vessels. Bearing of the circumlinear blood vessels. So, very good. Who was this? Who was this answering? So, me. Sanjana. Sorry? Sanjana? Yes, sir. Okay, good, Sanjana. So, this vessel, which is pretty much lying on the nerve fiber layer over here, then you see that there is a gap between these two. This is known as the bearing of the circumlinear vessel, which shows you there is a diffuse, there is no notch forming as yet, but there is a diffuse thinning. So, <clears throat> we'll see all the things that we keep seeing, but this is something important for you to note as of now. And okay, like somebody said, yes, there could be a kinking of the vessel that you may be seeing. What else is being seen over here, Piyushi? What other important sign? It is already, already seen in arrows. So what are you seeing over here? Sanjana? So no, the no fiber layer defect. Are are thinning, are yeah, are, yes, good. So it, it is thinning is not important. What is seeing is that what it was has become enlarged. So right from this thing itself, you can tell that the glaucoma is progressing. Progressing. Very good. <clears throat> so tell me now who is not answered. Uh, Ajiba, tell me why inferior and superior poles are more affected. Because why? of the arrangement of the fibers, sir, the arcuate fibers yeah. are more damaged in case of rise in intraocular yeah, pressure. Well, that's why I'm asking you. I know that arcuate fibers are more affected and they are coming from the superior and inferior poles. So why, why is it happening? Anybody else? Arab? Those scleral... Sorry, Arnav, it is Arnav. Bolo, bolo, chalo, jisne bola hai, batao. The collagenous support is uh, less inferior superiorly. Shruti, In those... is she right? Who who was this Sanjana? This was Sanjana. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The glial was glial support is uh, okay. less. Okay, okay. You are yeah, you are right. Only partially. The basic thing is there are larger fibers over there, and the pores are larger superiorly and inferiorly. And the support is thinner. Yes, the support is thinner, but the support is not the primary thing. The primary thing is that the fibers over there are larger in the superior and the inferior pole so that the slightest increase in the pressure and the tilting of the <coughs> tilting of the lamina causes a damage over there in these poles. And that is what we've seen. And this is what was very beautifully told by Quigley. <coughs> okay, who gave the uh, disc damage likelihood score? You she? Okay, Spath gave the... So, Spath. Right, very good. So, this damage likelihood scale is something that you have to learn and forget. Because unless you are in a primary institution where you are doing research, this will not be used. But it is a beautiful thing because everywhere else we are talking about the cup. The whole game is about, like we have learned, is about what? It is the neuroretinal rim. So this scale tells you actually about, talks only about the neuroretinal rim given by Spade. But so if you are going for an exam and you see that anybody is coming from RP Center, LV Prasad, Shankar Netrale, Arvind or some other top institution, immediately learn this properly. If somebody is coming from a smaller place, they are most unlikely to know it. So don't worry too much. But theoretically, yes, you should remember this scale. Mug it up for the time of the exams, after which you can forget it. The basic idea is 
that the thinnest part of the rim divided by the diameter of the disc. So this is very little over here, say maybe 0.1 as compared to the whole thing, which is one. So one to this thing becomes 0.1. And the moment it becomes, it touches the periphery, the, uh, uh, we have x over y, the x becomes zero. Uh, uh, therefore, the whole thing becomes zero. And when it becomes zero, then you only catch the extent for how long this damage is extending. And all this will then be in the stages of this thing, which can be just summed up that at risk glaucoma damage or glaucoma disability, depending upon how much is the damage. So this is just to be known, to be learned at the time of the exam. So now you have seen that we have seen what is the rim, we have seen what is the neuroretinal rim, which is the most important thing for us to understand. And Arna, what was the single most important thing in a neuroretinal rim to remember if whenever you are looking at it? What will be the single most important thing? Arna, you are there? Okay, Abhishek? Sir, IS, IS anti rules. Sir. Very good. Yeah. IS anti rules. Excellent. 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 Thickness, I inferior think, motor. I think now, now I'll see lesser one eyed patients sooner or later. <laughs> Very good job. So, that is the single most important thing. So, now we have seen that. Now we turn our attention to the nerve fiber layer. So, these are the axons of the ganglion cells which are coming over here and forming the neuroretinal rim. So, how are we going to see them? You have to basically see it under red free light which really gives it what you're looking at you're looking at the striations brightness visibility of the vessels and looking for the loss which could be diffuse or focal so that's what you are saying these are the striations you will see these are whitish striations you will keep seeing and then as we had seen previously also that wherever there's a notch you can see that they are dying over here the fibers are dying, you can see a large wedge defect over there. There could be some small slit-like defects which are naturally happening, don't worry about that. But these wedge defects based on to the edge and you and correlating with something happening in the neuroretinal rim also will give you a very good clue. And as we said, the red free photographs will give you the best clue over there. So again, you can see that localized RNFL loss can be very beautifully demarcated this way. And then you have to be careful that sometimes the entire sheen may be lost and it's looking pale and there's no striations all over. That means there is a diffuse loss. Maybe we are dealing with a advanced damage. And the same thing is being shown over here. The other things that we... Uh, look at is parapapillary atrophy, not really very important. Uh, so, Surbi, are you there? Okay, Sony, tell me what is the importance of parapapillary atrophy? Should we look at it or is it just really not very important? Sir, it will show increased pigmentation and chorioretinal atrophic patches. Can we... I, what was my question? <laughs> Parapapillary atrophy. Is it important or not important? That was my question. Not much of importance. Very good. So basically we have two zones, the alpha zone and the beta zone. And as she rightly was saying, the alpha zone is in the periphery, hypo and hyperpigmented area because of the irregularity of the RP, not so important. Beta zone is more important. Adjacent to this area, total of atrophy of the RP, you can see this shining through large choroidal vessels. And this at times is uh, if you have a larger beta zone, you know that possibly there will be a damage. It's not 100%, but it is more commonly seen in glaucoma and there would be a wedge defect nearby. There would be a, a damage to the <coughs> neuroretinal rim around this area. And when so that even when this starts enlarging, sometimes you can be in trouble that yes, there could be a problem. There could be a progression to glaucoma or it could be myopia, which is progressing in which there is a stretch and sometimes similar picture can occur. So you have to be careful. It is not something which is very great for us. Okay, so now we come to a optic disc hemorrhage. This is another very, very important sign. So, uh, Sogata, can you tell me where is it commonly located? In, in for temporally. Very good. Okay, so this is located in for temporally. 
more commonly sanjana in which type of glaucoma is it commonly seen so normal tension glaucoma very good and vishek is it always pathological usually sir no it is not always pathological so do not just uh, go into it <laughs> like we keep repeating in glaucoma look at everything no single sign even no single disc no single field by themselves will give you a diagnosis you will always have to start looking from the history the family history what's happening what were the pressures at various point times everything has to be taken into account is there a hemorrhage what is the disc looking like is the disc correlating with the field is the field correlating with the oct so many things okay so never say that one thing is the thing okay now, uh, ajiba can you tell me what is the cause of the hemorrhage Oh, that's a little difficult. Okay, we leave that. Uh, Piyushi, can you tell me what does it indicate? Normally, if we see a hemorrhage, what does it indicate to us? Sure. Sanjana. So the neuroretinal support is lost. So the vessels kink and they bleed. Very good. So that is the question to my. Uh, this is the answer to my first question. <laughs> so that is very rightly said. What is the second one? what does it indicate to you you write progression rightly, very good so what happens is like you already rightly told it is commoner in ntg it even if nothing is there at that time be very careful that later you might see a wedge defect there and the damage may start right over here. so it may proceed to an nfl loss if there's a new hemorrhage you have to be cautious meaning that either the glaucoma is developing or you are dealing with ntg or very rightly sanjana said progression so be more aggressive in your approach to treatment and like you people rightly said ntg is commoner but occurs in oeg also one third of them so on 10% while 35 is they may not always be there so they come and go and like uh, who said rightly 95% are there in two block Two of the RNFL defect. It is commoner in diabetics and inferior quadrant. You rightly said superior also it can occur more in early and moderate damage. Okay, and sometimes when it is crossing the disc, one may absorb the disc, one may absorb the rest may still be left over there. So be careful and very rightly Sanjana pointed out it is that the supportive tissue is lost and that is why the vessels kink and they bleed. <clears throat> then we come to the color so the fundus photograph has become an inherent part like i rightly told you almost 40% of the patients may be caught on progression in initial stages okay with the fundus photograph itself but be very careful in the photographs if you have got sclerotic cataracts and if you are looking at it with 90d lenses then it may not be their colors may change if you are under exposed over exposed then again the things may be trouble some so the red free lights are always so much better to give this kind of a thing again another important thing for us to know is the pallor of the cup so sogata what what does this cup show you what does this picture put it into your mind what what do you think when you see this thing Sogata? Yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. so what do you think when you see this kind of a disc? So you're looking at a patient, you look but, at uh, the cup. The cup size appears to be normal, but uh, the neuroretinal redeem uh, color is actually pale. Very good. So, uh, so it means it means it is a normal neurological neuropathy. Very right. Okay. It may not be. Who said neurological? So. It may not be neurological. It may be. It may be so many other things. It can be acute angle closure. Maybe yes, very good. So, <clears throat> who said that? So me, Sanjana. Sanjana, whose paper is this? So that I don't know. <laughs> I am beginning to think that you know everything. Sorry for that. 
So Dr. Ramanjit has written a paper. We'll come to that in a minute. So so here, what are we seeing? That cup is equal to pallor. So this is a normal disc. Okay. Now again, then we have. So this we have already talked about. Again, if you have pallor less than the cupping, that obviously means that you are talking about glaucoma. The same thing over here. Okay, so we turn to the size of the disc. Okay, uh, who has what speaker done? Dhan Lakshmi, are you there? Dhan Lakshmi. Okay, I don't think she is there. So, uh, Sony, can you tell me what is the importance of measuring the size of the disc? Why is it important for me to see what is the size of the disc? Sir, according to the size of the cup, we will know uh, the damage to the nerve, nerve fibers. Bigger cup will be of more risk. <laughs> How will you measure the size of the disc, Yushi? How do you measure the size of the disc? Um, sir, in direct ophthalmoscope, there is a setting for uh, measuring the size. Uh, Which direct ophthalmoscope? Everybody. So it's nine degree. So in well challenge, degree. five degree. Yes, five degree illumination of well challenge. Five degree. Is the one which will almost be equal to the normal size. Are you already read this thing? So anything less than 1.4 is small. Anything more than two is. You'll see various. Uh, so don't go hard and fast on this uh, numbers. You know the, the numbers are given variously by various people. But by and large, anything less than 1.4 is a small disc. What are, what is my worry in a small disc, uh, Arnav? I think Dhan Lakshmi is not there. Uh, yes. Uh, Arnab, what is the what is my worry in a small disc? Uh, so the disc could be at uh, risk. Uh, even cases of hypermetropes, they uh, tend to have a smaller disc. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, so the chances of NAIUN may be uh, more or fair, fair enough. Suggest. What you are saying is right, but what I wanted was from the smaller it, disc will have a over, smaller overcrowding. Cup, so so uh, overcrowding of yeah, So so. So the chances of your missing out on all the format of the things that we have said isn't rule this that notch ye wo all may be missed in a small disc, okay? Because you rightly pointed out the fibers are crowded, so be very careful. You have to be more careful in a small disc, okay? So the one thing was that we can measure the size of the disc by seeing the five degree Bellman thing. What is the other technique? Anybody Just else? Just lamp. Very good. Lit lamp. Lamp. So lit lamp. Lit Along the vertical axis, okay. uh, yeah. the long axis. Very good. So you take these two axes and you measure this thing. So what what uh, the standard we are using is the 90D. What is the multiplication factor? 1.33. So you are the hot seaters. I think I'm. I think we must also explain to everybody else who is listening. So let's go back and say that yes, I will tilt my uh, uh, this thing uh, slit lamp, and on the top there is a mark. And when you increase the size of the slit, it will become this much. And if the size is say around two, then I am using a 90D. I will multiply it by 1.3, so it becomes that much, and that is the size of the disc. Okay. So this is the way we are going to measure the size of the disc. <laughs> so this we have. Why is it important? Nobody answered me. Why is the size of the disc very very important? And if you do not so, miss out so. on it, then you are going to miss out and and you go into a chain of things which will be troublesome. Yes, who wants to answer that? So bigger disc usually have bigger cups. Very but they are physiological good. very good very good excellent don't say that it may not be physiological but may not it be also yes. to be physiological 
you can just say that all large disc that i see may have a large cup so it is actually the other way around you have to see that if i have seen a large cup it is likely it is a part of a large disc and maybe nothing is wrong but you cannot believe the number of people i there get every day so it can be physiological so so what does this look like arnav can you tell me what is it looking like uh what is this it's a myopic uh, this what is what are these can you see my uh, marker yes it's a acute defect ha huh? ah. no sir so uh, normal uh, normal no fiber layer very good who was that so so this these are normal striations that would be what i have been telling you all the time please arnav tumne kya bola isko acute defect kaha bana diya tune bhai these are all normal striations if you can't look at that look at the nrr the neuro retinal rim is healthy okay same with this so this is classically to show you that the this is a normal disc okay but the cup is looking large okay asymmetry again is a very very important so the moment you find there the two cups are asymmetrical you will be worried okay so what about this sanjana what do you say about this what do you say about this right eye so it is uh, it's a medium sized disc with uh, 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 which is following the isn't rule very good which is and, uh, and not... you know two other things that you would like to say there isn't tool is being followed the size looks okay and what else you will say one more thing that you might just add you know no peripapillary atrophy with no disc hemorrhage right peripapillary atrophy humne pehle hi bola yaar itna important nahi hai usse zyada kya important hai no fiber layer defect very good so you have to say that i can't see any wedge defect as yet okay yes sir so what about this one What is the difference between two discs of this person? The size. Very good. So the size is different. But what about the cup? Do you think it's a normal cup? Oh, sorry, the yes, normal sir, in... uh, disc as such. We can't get oh. over the habit of calling cups. <laughs> We are too much into it. <laughs> so so it's following the isn't rule. Inferior is. Everything looks okay. There's no clear cut wedge defect. There's no the striations are normal. the isn't rule is being followed very good so the fields are normal and what does it tell you what you rightly said so the disc area and this is 2.6 and it is 3.28 so this this the disc itself is large and that is why the cup is large so you get what i am trying to teach you now yes so moment so why am i teaching you this for god sake i know you may have got a new oct machine for which you have to pay an emi i know you may have got a new field machine for which you have to pay any money but in the night when you sleep with yourself the woman or the man inside you is going to ask you did you go and cheat somebody so that is the most important question that will make you alive okay so so when you see a person a 12 year old girl like with with these kind of large cups what is the first thing you will do Sanjana, what will you do? Uh, um, so family history of glaucoma. Very good. I'm so proud of you. Very nice. This girl has gone to three places. She has got hundred tests done. Okay. All they had to do was what? Yushi, क्या करना था? What was one thing they had to do? Family history. अरे history नहीं है. अब क्या करना है? Arnav. चाइल्ड Okay, so it can be physiological. Rule out myopia. Examine the family members. Is that part clear? 
which you did that part is clear i'll be very very happy because lot of money can be saved and you will be doing a very good ethical practice okay but yes if there is an asymmetry over there if you find there is something wrong in the other things if you find that the mother and the father are having absolutely normal disc then you are worried then there are some vascular changes bayoneting somebody was saying that this is the bayonet the the turning at right angles and this is what i saw you i told you in the very first part right and then we talk about the same thing is the overpass cupping you know so this is when the tissue is lost from here the axons are lost from here there is a bearing now but what will happen is it will just get into the it will drop into the cup and will become a bayonet over there so this is the overpass cup so what is the distribution of the fibers swagata are you there yes sir so tell me yes, the sir. the fibers which are coming from the periphery of the retina the last part of the retina yes sir where do they enter in yes, the sir. nerve they are uh, in the most peripheral part and the most deepest uh, region very good very good okay so that is that is important to understand that the fibers which are in the periphery are coming to the periphery the fibers in the central area are coming to the central area because now you are going to read fields and everything and you will have to correlate everything okay so the fibers if they are damaged here i'll show you another fiber so this is uh, the photograph from my old shields which i used to mug up in my pg times and underline everything so so this is a is the area of the disc okay this is the temporal area so the inferior and the superior a area is the central germs rhomboid okay so if you go up over here when they are damaged you will get something like this and when you uh, have b that is the peripheral germs rhomboid which will be when the damage occurs over there there will be a fiber loss over here you will get a wedge defect and field defect over here then then the, sorry this is the this is the area e which is the nasal rim so all the nasal fibers are coming here and these are the these are which ones which will represent as what sanjana what will they present as so temporal field defect very good so that may be the last thing always remember if a patient comes to you and i have had this 100 times he has got a mature cataract nobody is ready to operate the other eye is advanced damage so they think that this is a pr inaccurate eye nothing will be happening over here only this area is left but many a times when you operate these eyes they still can get very good vision just remember that that is off the cuff it is nothing to do with this but since that had come and all the central fibers all the fibers from this area the huge number of fibers coming from this area enter here and they form what is known as the temporal rim corresponding to the central island okay and the c is the inferior and superior temporal rims which forms the corresponds to the nasal constriction of the field so this again you will have to map this out in your mind and learn it to understand that where the fibers are being damaged and how that damage is progressing and so if the entire rim is lost it starts from here goes over here the two things that we saw the central rhomb uh, rhomboid the peripheral rhomboid and then going on to the nasal area so the entire arcuate is covering the total area. so i think uh, okay uh, i think still a question how do the axons and fibers are getting damaged in walking uh, shruti shruti is there yes sir so shruti how are they getting damaged what is your theory for telling me that they they are getting damaged sir there are two theories a uh, mechanical and a uh, vascular theory very good so uh, Uh, due to increase in the intraocular pressure, uh, one of the theories uh, there will be a decrease in the perfusion pressure, mm -hmm. resulting in ischemia. 
Okay, okay. So you are talking about the vascular part. Vascular theory. Anyway, fine. So you, so you are right. Basically, what basically happens is that due to the raised IOP, the lamina bends, and we already talked about which stopping the axoplasmic flow at the lamina cribrosa. And the larger fiber sized fibers with the lesser support in the superior and the inferior areas are damaged. <clears throat> if the pressure is on the higher side, it is said that it is primarily the mechanical theory which is working. Whereas if the pressure is pretty much normal, then they say it is the, especially in cases of normal tension glaucoma, it is the vascular phenomena which is more important. But anyway, nobody is very clear about it. So if somebody is examiner is trying to argue, you can in the end say, sir, it is not clear. Everybody is still confused. What is the what is the role of cerebrospinal fluid? Abhishek? Sanjana? What is the role of CSF? Are you there? Yes, sir. I can't sir, I'm not, aware. not answering. Thank you very much for uh, not answering. <laughs> It's uh, continuous with the dual sheet of the optic surface. No, sorry, so, I didn't see who is speaking. Sogata speaking. Ah, Sogata, tell me clearly. Sir, subarachnoid space is continuous with uh, uh, the dual sheet of the optic nerve right. behind yeah. the lamina fibrosa. Very good. So, so any increase in uh, intracranial pressure can transmit the pressure to the optic nerve head and uh, jeopardize the vascular supply. Okay, I don't have any more. You idea. can take it that way, but what is the important thing for you to understand here now is that you rightly said that actually this part, let us say, is part of the brain. Okay. And this is the separating part. So, what happens is that if the pressure is, let us say, 10 here, okay, and the pressure is, uh, say, 10 here, it is fine, it is very evenly balanced. Okay. Now, if suppose the CSF pressure becomes low, okay, then even the 10 pressure here is appearing to be a higher pressure because it is the difference it, the lab, at this lamina which is important. You getting it? Yes, sir. Yes. So now this, so that is how it so beautifully explains the normal tension thing that even at normal tension, if the difference between the CSF and this has been shown in NTG and also in open angle glaucoma, if the pressure here is low, then the damage will still occur, okay, even at lower pressures because the, the, the difference between the two pressures is very much there and the, bed, the lamina will bend and the same thing will happen, right? But yeah. what happens in ocular hypertension, I am asking? अरे भाई ये 26 26 प्रेशर पे ये आदमी तो ठीक चल रहा है 20 साल से बिना दवाई के कैसे भाई व्हाई पॉसिबली ही हैज गॉट नाउ व्हाट दे हैव फाउंड दैट पॉसिबली द प्रेशर इन द सीएसएफ इज मच हायर एंड इट इज बैलेंसिंग दैट 26 सो दैट द लैमिना डजंट मूव एट ऑल सो दैट इज व्हाई दे से दैट इन ऑक्युलर हाइपरटेंशन यू हैव टू बी केयरफुल हाउ मच यू वांट टू लोअर because there are balance. So this theory is still being developed. We really do not know too much because obviously it is difficult to do the CSF pressure. But this is something which you must keep in mind. And if somebody asks, you should be able to answer. So now as far as the differential diagnosis, this is the optic disc coloboma. What is a morning glory disc? What does morning glory stand for? It's a flower. It's a flower. Very, very good. So morning glory is a flower. What is a morning glory syndrome? Anybody? What is a morning glory syndrome? Congenital malformation of the optic nerve. Yeah, that is a morning glory. That is a morning glory disc that you'll get it like that. But if it is a syndrome, means they are associated anomalies like transphenoidal basal and cephalocele or hypoplasia of the cerebral arteries. So just remember it off the cuff because if you see something like that, please remember that your duty does not end there. You have to refer it to a pediatric neurologist or a neurologist whenever you see the person. So the biggest challenge is to differentiate a myopic disc from a 
from a glaucometer's desk and every time i go to any conference this is the only thing i want to learn and yet it is a totally confused thing so please remember it is a difficult thing because the edges are never clear there is large areas of parapapillary atrophy and choroidal atrophy and staphyloma formation and tilt so it is very very difficult to make a this thing so if you have a patient with a myopic disc you are not sure whether it is glaucomatous or not uh, sanjana how what will you do to make sure that you get the right treatment whether should you treat this patient or not what other things you will do so first we have to find out the optic disc size by size is at... difficult to tell in this so like i was saying you have to move on to other things so in these cases the vessel trocular pressure COVID. you will look for the family history and if you are not sure please wait and see whether there is any progression which is happening over there what is this what are you seeing here anybody so Dru drusen lamnar dot sign anybody else optic disc drusen optic pit? Disc is it pit A optic pit. disc pit optic pit yes very right so this is a pit and pit is again the same thing it can non closure of the optic fissure i think we are behind time so i'll move now a little faster not this is not really important why is it important the pit may sometimes give rise to a fluid which will cause macular edema macular edema what is this what is this tilted this so this is a tilted this and tilted this could be congenital or acquired how do you differentiate a congenital and acquired tilted disc anybody so 50% of the patients of the congenital uh, disc will have color defects and congenital disc is unlikely to be progressive because so many times the myopic disc will could be tilted and there could be glaucoma associated with that so it may be very difficult there will be field defects okay so there will be a typical field defect like this but you have to wait you have to see whether it it is progressing or not again there is how are the pressure how is the family history so in tilted disc again do not fall into this trap of treating straight away because it may be a congenital anomaly which is straying over there so this we had already talked about this is a pale disc what is the differential we were talking about we don't have too much time so i'll now move faster a little bit so remember night tick so it could be neuritis it could be ischemia granulomatous hereditary traumatic toxic irradiation compression so somebody was saying it's a neuro disc yes we are most worried about the neuro part but we must also rule out all the other things as well and as rightly said the moment you you see a disc like that that go back go back do a gonioscopy and check whether the angles are closed and dr raman ji's paper is this there on that okay because the acg cups are smaller shallower and they'll be more uh, paler over there so there could be a compressive thing over there all right so so uh, shruti please read about yes. yes tell me about this disc Uh, so uh, this is a fundus okay fundus picture showing uh, uh, the left uh, optic disc uh, with moderate size and uh, uh, there um, go ahead good good optic cup optic cup uh, uh, margins are not uh, cup ka mat kya karo theek hai na cup ka itna importance nahi hai kya aur yahan pe uh it appears there is a superior uh, notching very good, very good so there is a superior notching and the neuro uh, the wedge defect may not be clear because of because, because of, of the uh, tessellated fundus tessellated fundus very good excellent excellent so there is a tessellated fundus over there so you be may not be clear so there is a superior wedge defect you do the field defect and you get an inferior damage in the field like that okay okay sir. okay So Piyushi, what do you say about this disc? Sir, it's a large disc. Okay, um, good. With the normal uh, neuroretinal rim following 
and as dr harsh said that you know the structural changes precede the functional changes and out of the structural changes the disc changes and the rnfl changes where the rnfl changes precedes the disc changes remember the second most important you know you have to examine all the disc with dilated pupils and with stereopsis means either with 90 or 78 diopter lens and on the slit lamp if you are examining with a direct ophthalmoscope you would be missing so many finding remember that you know everyone does the perimetry everyone do the octs but the disc photograph is also equally important or i would go to the extent and say that it's more important than any other test you know with just by doing the serial disc photographs you can pick up the defect you can pick up the progression and the oct is not at all good test for the disc it is the test for the rnfl okay it's not a good tomogram so remember one thing that whatever parameter you get on the oct for the disc is not always true the another important point is that every individual has a different type of disc like you know you can identify the person with the iris pattern similarly you can identify the person with the disc uh, whatever the disc changes are there so every individual has a different disc and that's why i always say that any artificial intelligence would not be able to pick up at what you can pick up by doing a good clinical and thorough examination and that is what dr harsh has taught to all of us thank you dr harsh it was wonderful pleasure always listening to you my pleasure sir so manita uh, let us have your comments on uh, anything we want to add on because all of us look at these things and in a different way slightly different way maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. i actually want to put a put a question to all the hot seaters i want to know uh, what cup disc ratio level is a normal level Point three to point four. Point seven can also be normal uh, if it's a large disc. Absolutely, there is no normal cup disc ratio level of cup disc ratio. If it's a large disc, up to point eight, even point nine. If you have a more than three millimeter disc. it can be it can be normal and this is something i keep repeating in uh, whenever i teach this and i give the example and you know you may have heard this before i don't know that how do you view a small disc and a large disc um say whichever room you are sitting in if you double the size of the room it appears a little sparse as though there's more space that is what a large disc looks like as though there is a lot more space so it it has it can accommodate the same number of nerve fibers 1.2 million as as he said compared to a small disc now imagine the same room that you're sitting in to be halved in size won't it look crowded so a 0.3 can be abnormal in a small disc whereas a 0.8 could be normal in a large disc there in lies he kept asking you dr harsh kept asking you what is the uh, significance of measuring the size of the disc that is extremely important and the second point i wanted to make in um, although we we have all been taught about the isn't rule there is some recent evidence that it may not hold true for all this actually uh, in a study and the uh, this this is present there in the uh, american academy inet uh, if you if you follow that is that less than 40% normal discs actually follow the isn't rule so if it is followed the 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 bottom line is if it is followed then you can be more or less sure this is a normal disc if it is not followed then you have to fall back upon other signs that he's talked about to to be uh, to um, uh, diagnose uh, whether the disc is glaucomatous or not so what i'm trying to say is that inferior rim can be thin thinner than the superior okay but it may still be normal and how do you make out by looking at the no no fiber layer no fiber layer yes the significance of the no fiber layer should not be lost here at all so uh, when isn't rule was applied in that same study it looked normalized it looked at uh, abnormalized or, or glaucomatous size 
when isn't rule was applied to glucometazide the, the 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 percentage was slightly better but it correlated best with rnfl changes so 70% more or less correlated with rnfl changes so the rnfl was thickest inferior then superior and then temporal nasal actually caused the maximum uh, confounding uh, effect on the um, isn't rule but for exam purposes as dr harsh has said i think you know you can safely quote quote isn't true but you know you need to keep that in mind um any comments dr harsh or dr pratik nay <clears throat> fair enough like we we have been repeating again and again that no single point is of total importance they have to move around with every single thing all things in glaucoma will be a total no single point is all doing so i think it's fair enough absolutely you can't see a disc hemorrhage and then suddenly say oh this is glaucomatous exactly. you know you have to see whether there is any other vascular changes in the fundus the patient could be a diabetic could be a hypertensive you know this is very common in our country very common around the world so one has to be looking at all the signs the five signs we talked about very very uh, carefully and there are certain signs which are actually fairly non specific or only mildly specific you know like the lamina dot sign which people like to pick up because it's so uh, you know in your face when you're looking at a photograph like that but actually it may not make a difference what is important there is that the superior not the superior rim was virtually notched uh, there was hardly any rim there so that, those kind of obvious signs are are way more important so rim sorry disc size rim nerve fiber layer disc hemorrhage and perhaps peripapillary atrophy especially if it's present all around that is these are the most important uh, signs yeah any comments so you know the the other thing is that you have to be very very careful with the tilted disc with the inferior corners you know they are very challenging disc Yes. This with the myelinated nerve fibers, you know, very challenging. This it's very very difficult to pick up the glaucomatous changes in these discs. And the other thing is the sunal sclerotic disc, very common. You know, you 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 are seeing a eighty eighty five year old patient, and you are seeing little bit of pilar and little bit of large curve. So don't uh, fall into the trap that this patient has a glaucoma, because you know so many nerve fiber layer cells are are already dead. Almost ten thousand cells. Uh, everyone uses every year. Uh, so almost eighty percent of cells are dead. So it looks very similar to glaucomatous disc. So you have to be very very careful about that. And remember that primary opening of glaucoma disc is a classical disc where you can learn to pick up the glaucomatous defect. Otherwise, the normal tension glaucoma and angle of glaucoma and secondary glaucoma disc are a little different. But they may not present as a classical glaucomatous disc changes. in the same context as as you said they are challenging they are missed quite regularly the myopic disc so in myopia you have to be that much more careful it is a, you know some so difficult sometimes when it's tilted when there is situs inversus so many other things it is it is challenging so i think quite often um we do err in myopes on the on the you know uh, err on the safer side rather than let them let them progress especially if the pre pressure is borderline or mm -hmm. slightly high okay um i move on to the questions uh this suspect first in a dis suspect if oct is normal do we need to do perimetry well i think uh, let us take uh, i really don't think this uh, this would fall into the purview of our uh, discussion i think we can because we are going to have oct we are going to have uh, fields so we can take let us take things which are related as of now okay fine uh, <laughs> the second question is also very related yes, in this suspect if uh, what to order if patient if a patient cannot afford oct and visual field um, okay. so uh, i think that they they are stuck on that so definitely <laughs> if you are very very uh, sure about your disc findings you have taken the entire history there is a family history is also positive you feel that the patient is you have done a diurnal variation the pressures are on the higher side you have done a gonioscopy it's an open angle 
So all this you have done. Now you want to order some test. Uh, definitely they are number at wherever you are, there are government hospitals which will do the test for free everywhere. So in this case, you cannot escape from not doing the visual field test. If we are going to make a diagnosis of glaucoma, I think it is imperative that we do send the patient, explain to him and, and for many of you who will be doing the private practice, and funnily enough, some of these people, practitioners said, Ki, sir, aur bhej denge, wo wapis nahi paas. Let me remind all of you youngsters, if you do the right thing by the patient, they will always stick to you. So you tell them, I do not have this test. This test is imperative. Please go get this visual field done. Ring up that person, tell him that, sir, एक बार करना अगर उसमें डिफेक्ट आ रहा है तो प्लीज सर उसको दो तीन घंटे बिठा के या अगले दिन बुला के एक बार दोबारा कर लेना दे विल बी अ लर्निंग डिफेक्ट लर्निंग कर्व इफ द पेशेंट मस्ट हैव टू आइडेंटिकल विजुअल फील्ड डिफेक्ट्स फॉर अस टू फॉर्म अ बेसलाइन सो यू विल हैव टू ऑर्डर दैट टेस्ट डॉक्टर प्रदीप या यू नो आई 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 टोटली एग्री यू नो आई डोंट बिलीव ऑन ओसीटी Oh, I do uh, OCT for almost every single patient. But yes, uh, if there is a, uh, you know, you suspect a patient uh, as a glaucoma on basis of the disc examination, then the first test I would order is a perimetry. Okay, I will see the perimetry and then only I, I will think of doing the OCT and the other thing. And uh, just, just by uh, seeing the red disease, I would never ever diagnose the patient as a glaucoma. Are just seeing everything green. I will never ever diagnose the patient that is it's a, uh, healthy. Everything is healthy. So you know uh, you have to put your brain into it. Uh, you know it's a it should be a holistic approach. You have to combine with pressure, with the disc uh, changes, RNFL changes, the perimetry, and probably the OCT comes at the bottom. Yeah, I am smiling, and I think Dr. Santosh took the cue. I'm sure we are going to have fireworks on Friday, <laughs> but it's all in you know in good spirit. We we need to debate um, uh, you know uh, all these aspects. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next question again is RNFL loss. Uh, you know how much of RNFL loss is clinically significant? Uh, so that we may order perimetry if CDR looks normal. And this is why I asked that question. Is there a normal level of CDR? No, no, no. Uh, no, no. They are saying how much of nerve fiber should be. If you see a wedge defect over there, then definitely that means something is wrong. And you have to order a perimetry. If the perimetry is normal, yes, then you may have to order an OCT. Or whatever is available as the imaging modality to check out if there is an early damage which is corroborating. So like I showed you that case in which there was thick corneas and I missed out and there was early damage. When we went back, when the damage occurred, the OCT also was showing the damage. So at the earliest time, you can pick up a wedge defect. You can do it 18 to 20% of the fibers also are to be damaged before the OCT can show a change. So uh -huh. if there's 40% damage in fields before they'll show a change, there is also a lag period here as well. So that part is to be understood. Yeah, that quantification is difficult. Uh, we don't know who is going to lose 30% and show, that, show changes in the visual field or who's going to you know, be 50% loss and still not show. So, uh, you know, functional uh, uh, investigation is 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 a must. It still is uh, very much a gold standard. Would you agree, Dr. Pradeep? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the OCT does help uh, at time. You know, I don't deny that. But whatsoever you see on the OCT, if you do a good thorough clinical examination, you would have you may pick it up. Uh, defect uh, by your eyes itself. So, yes, yes, you can do a good quantification by doing the OCT. Okay, the common damage has, uh, has occurred and how it is progressing. This was, OCT is important, but it's not the ultimate right now. So what Santosh was showing was that we are getting into where what Asrani was supposed to take. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I like these viewpoints. <laughs> right, the next question is uh, color coding of the disc when fundus photo is not available. 
color coding of the disk so when fundus photo is not available no i i, I really there is no specific color coding on the disk you can draw this just by pencil or pen and uh, by for hemorrhage you can use the red pencil and for the paraphernalia atrophy you can use the brown otherwise as, as such there is no other things uh, other coding for this family you can make your own <laughs> yeah or you okay. said uh, for no fiber layer green is the standard <clears throat> no fiber layer defect especially if it is um, a, a, a wedge defect okay if a my young myopic patient has large cup with normal iop how regularly do we follow up to monitor yeah i think at least a six monthly follow up is a must and you have done your uh, visual fields you have done your corneal thickness you have done all the baseline tests and now you are going to watch for these myopes that because many of them may develop field changes which may actually be related to the changes in the retinal nerve in the uh, maybe staphylometer changes maybe uh, corneal atrophy is because of the myopic changes so one has to be careful whether those changes are coming because of the myopic uh, stretching or is it because of the glaucomatous uh, damage which is progressing so if you have got a good oct reading over there and uh, many a times people say that if you are doing a, a gcc then the glb is more important normally they say that the focal loss is more important but in myopia it is the glb which is more important to keep a track of whether it's going to progress and the moment you find that either the pressure is rising or the field is getting damaged more than can be explained by anything in the retina per se then you may uh, okay. think of treating that there's something that worries me in this question because there is no question there is no mention of perimetry um you know uh, hopefully perimetry is also normal large cup maybe yeah. we don't know could be normal so uh, yeah any comments dr pradeep yeah, that's fine you know whenever you have a patient like this you know you have to do a serial follow up there is no doubt about it but remember one thing that the glaucoma is not like a cancer uh, it would progress slowly so you would be able to pick up the defect and whenever you you pick up the defect or you pick up the progression then obviously you can start a treatment or you can modify the treatment so once in a six month as dr har said it's it's perfect and you can do the test like perimetry once in a year or so well uh, like we were talking uh, you know myopic tests are difficult sometimes when they have other myopic corneoretinal atrophy you know close to the disc close to the macula close to the posterior pole so then these also progress especially in high myopes and in pathological myopes so sometimes it is difficult so monitoring is very essential there is no doubt about that and uh, the last question i think um, how to uh, assess optic disc progression in neurological disease i wonder neurological i think the best way is to do the visual field serially i think that is the way to go do not try and <laughs> do a progression <laughs> on the test by any means and as a matter of fact i can tell you i have patients whom i tell with visual fields that yes your pituitary thing is progressing and then they go to the neurosurgeon and then he does a ct and finds out that yes there is a progression so visual fields and perimetry is imperative do not try and do it on disc by any means mm -hmm. any comments dr pradeep yeah, the it, it's very difficult to pick up the progression of uh, neurological disc uh, perimetry is the right tool to do that yes i agree and the neurologist would, would do the mri and pick up the progression so apart from the uh, perimetry uh, just by the disc it is not uh, conclusive that we are we can say that it is progressing or it is stable no no not by the disc no no sure In your neurological disease, you meant, or no? Did yes, you mean neuro neurological diseases? Uh, yeah. Neurological, yeah. Like we had a patient of uh, pituitary macroadenoma, and then if you are uh, asking him to come for follow-ups, then just by the disc, can I tell is, is if uh, the damage has progressed or not? 
it's, That's what it's, it's actually. Yeah, Don't put your right foot into that better send the patient to the neurologist and let the neurophysician deal with that patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, on that note, I um, have to thank Dr. Harsh. Uh, Dr. Sandosh already put up <laughs> a slide saying mm -hmm. master of disc examination. What more can I add to that? Um, yeah. Thank you very much indeed for, uh, you know, uh, the time just flew. I couldn't even, I didn't realize it was, it was an hour. Uh, and that only happens when you're enjoying something. And thank you, Dr. Pradeep, as usual. Thank you for your wonderful comments. And uh, just a reminder, again, in case you missed that slide uh, that was put up, next week, uh, sorry, next Friday, not next week, this week on Friday, we have techniques, interpretation, and role of retinal nerve fiber layer evaluation. And this is to be done by Professor Sanjay uh, Giridhar Asrani. He uh, is from Duke Eye Center, North Carolina, USA. There's a hundred years and for all the energy that you bring into glaucoma sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So looking forward to the century talk. Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> Once, yes, 100. Bye, Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.